And I'll say this too, I'm, I could be biased, but I think speaking and book writing is simultaneously, I think everybody should do it. And yeah. the reason why I say that is this, years, because you talk about passion earlier, years and years ago, I used to work in the school system and I was very passionate about like helping young men because it's like nobody had to answer. So I wrote a book, I wrote one book, I did presentations for years off of that one book. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the the level of communication, I communicated my ideas in a book, but then I took the, the same content and information from that book and created a six-figure career from one presentation that I did over and over and over again. So one thing that I do now is that I've transferred most of my speaking to online because again, I'm all about time and I love to spend time with my family. And, you know, younger, it's like traveling, like that sounds great, but man, when you living out of a hotel, and you by yourself, you know, oh, that, man, you man. know, all of that celebrity, it, it, you know, so I, I focus really on helping them to make money from the online space. And, I, and again, just like myself, where I had one book, one presentation making six figures. And so I focus on helping them to make one presentation. People say it's not about how you start, but it's how you finish. Mm. But I will say how you start makes your finish a little bit easier. But whatever you want your finish to be is not impossible. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, in today's digital age, knowledge is just as valuable as gold and oil. The good news is that everyone has unique skills, experiences, and insights that others are eager to learn. On the flip side, instead of leveraging their knowledge to earn income, most people get trapped in the traditional paradigm of trading hours for money where their earning potential is directly tied to the time they put in. Well, today we have a serial entrepreneur, international speaker, and best-selling author here to teach us how to get off the hamster wheel and learn how effective speaking and leveraging your personal brand can help you create a legacy that pays you for the rest of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my next guest, Chris Cannon in the building. What's up, brother? Ash Cash, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal introduction. First yes, and sir. foremost, yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you for uh, allowing me to be here, and I yes. look forward to sharing with the audience and, and you know, leaving some value. Yes, sir. I, I, I love, um, you know, I love this topic. Um, I think that, you know, the biggest thing that has changed my life is my ability to stop change, exchanging time for dollars, yep. right? Um, time, we all, I don't care who you are, Jeff Bezos, uh, Warren Buffett, Jay-Z, Beyonce, we all have 24 hours. Yep. Um, and if you don't learn how to leverage your time, exactly. um, you'll be working forever and you'll never be financially free, you'll never get to that space of relief. And uh, when I think about the power of words, whether it's me as an author, speaker, you, you know, you as an author, speaker, and the ability to like fully learn how to uh, take the power of words in order to create a fortune for yourself, yeah. Um, I, this is my my favorite thing. So insiders, I need you to, to tap in and like stay to the end because I promise you. We all have uh, a unique skill. We all have power. We all have something in us that's already naturally, innately exactly. in us that we can monetize. Um, and and I and I think that if if 
if you learn how to do that and you've been very successful in doing it for yourself as well as for other people. And so if you learn how to do that, um, you could really, really, really just live the life that you want on your terms. Yeah. But before we even go there, for those who don't know, who is Chris Cannon? Chris Cannon is um, somebody who really values family above everything else. Um, my wife, my family, um, and, and I really have a passion to help people, you know, because I really believe that no matter how much money you get, if you don't find a way to give back, you can't go forward yeah. successfully. And so I'm somebody who's a student, yeah. you know, because I believe in terms of teaching other people, you have to be a student and you have to be a step ahead of them to make sure that their journey is as phenomenal as it can be. And so I'm a, I'm a lifelong student, a lifelong learner, and a lifelong earner and teacher as well. You decided to focus on speaking as a career. What has been the, the biggest benefit of choosing that, that route? What, one of the biggest benefits is time. Mm -hmm. You know, Warren Buffett had a quote. He, and, and I'll tell you, just for transparency, his quote pissed me off, mm -hmm. but it was, it was true. Yeah. But he said, if you don't find a way to make money in your sleep, mm -hmm. you'll work until you die. Wow. And so the thing that I thought about is, you know, to a certain extent, I agree with him. However, if you find a way to make a whole lot of money while you're awake, it makes up for the time of the money you don't make when you're asleep. Facts. But if you can make money when you're asleep as well, make a whole lot of money when you're awake as well, then you got the best of both worlds. Yeah. But it's like the thing that I have uh, experienced and learned is that when you really develop this skill, and I'll tell you this. The best speakers in the world look different to different people because sometimes people think in order to be the best speaker in the world, you have to be a Tony Robbins or a Les Brown or a somebody else. And the thing is this, there is an audience specifically for you. And no matter how much energy somebody has, no matter how much money they make, they might make like you more than they like somebody else. And so the thing that I've learned is that like when it comes to speaking, it, it really gives you an unfair advantage to make as much money as you want, have as much free time as you want, and have the fulfillment that you really desire. Because I really believe this, that if you, don't, if you don't have the money, if you don't have the time, and if you don't have the fulfillment, you're gonna find some kind of way to self-sabotage. Yeah. Finances, fulfillment, and freedom, those are the, the three things that everybody has to have inside of their way of making money, or else they're gonna find some kind of way to self-sabotage. And so for me, the, the, one of the biggest benefits is, is having the freedom, the finances, and the fulfillment. Because again, family is so important to me. And it's nothing like going on vacation and coming back home with more money than you left with. That's a fact. Because you spent an hour or two hours somewhere of your time, but you enjoyed three days or four or five days with your family yes. that came along with you. And it's like, that is one of the greatest feelings in the world. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and, and you know, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna kind of, you know, dive a little bit into, something that you mentioned, right? The, the three Fs. Um, that last F though, that fulfillment part of it, um, a lot of people want to have that level of fulfillment, but they don't know how to get the finances from it, right? Um, and so I, I guess my question to you is, um, and, 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 and really like, like, and you even mentioned this too, you said you like yeah, helping when people. When I'm at events and I'm speaking to people, um, or even people. A lot of times, like uh, when I'm at maybe events and I'm show, speaking to people, or even people um, who are like, uh, maybe wanna, watching this show, they're like, man, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to help. I want to help people. I want to help people. I want to help people. And the things that they're trying to help people with are not, it's not a good business model. And so now, it's not a good business model. And so now, they get the fulfillment. But they don't begin of helping people. They don't get the finances. Uh, but they don't get the finances. And if they don't get the finances, they start to have um, resentment. Yeah. And, and so now that fulfillment um, now turns into a burden. So how could somebody, um, ha like, like, how do you find that fulfillment and then create that business model that's going to create that the finances? Well, the, the first thing to start and understand is that when it comes to the, the billion dollar industries, health, wealth, and relationships are the billion dollar industries. Mm -hmm. So any idea that somebody has, the best thing that you can do to truly make money from it is figure out number one, does it fit into one of those categories? And if it doesn't, how can you connect it to those categories? Mm -hmm. And the reason why you wanna connect it to those categories is because that's the stream of money that people are already putting their money in. Mm -hmm. And so if you can find a unique way to take your idea, your concept, you know, 
and put it into health, wealth or relationships like that's something that people are already spending money on. Because, again, if you could sell money at a discount, that's an easy sale. Right. If you could sell something to somebody and they're about to die, that's an easy sale. Right. If somebody's having relationship problems and they're like, look, I just want my significant other or whatever. That's an easy sale. Yeah. And so if you can just start with those three and just connect what you want to offer into those three, it just makes it a lot easier. But the other thing, too, is that like sometimes people make the mistake of just focusing on the fulfillment piece mm -hmm. and they neglect everything else because like we have these six needs and, and one of our highest needs is the need of significance. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can focus on a fulfillment, it'll meet your needs of significance, but it's going to destroy yourself in those other areas. And, it, and that's when the whole imposter syndrome and all those kind of things come into place. But just to keep it simple, if you focus on something related to health, wealth and relationships and just center whatever you want to do into one of those areas, you have a much better chance of being successful in the finances, freedom and fulfillment. And so, and so, and so if, I, if I hear you correctly, it's like, um, all right. You, you, you have this level of, or, or, or you desire this level of fulfillment, but it's also um, taking that uh, fulfillment um, and, and, and figuring out, right? Like figuring out what, the, uh, what that financial part looks mm -hmm. like first. Um, that freedom um, aspect of it, like making sure that you understand what work needs to be done in order to right. kind of get, get to that, get to that level. If, if I'm, if I'm understanding it, that correctly. Exactly. Yeah. And here's the other thing too. If you only focus on the freedom, I mean, uh, the, the fulfillment, you're going to find some kind of way to self-sabotage. And what that might look like is, okay, you do this fulfillment piece over here, but now you got to get a job somewhere else mm. to fund this. And now you start to resent the very thing that you brings right. you fulfillment. Now and you got to get the freedom. You don't get the freedom, right. you know, you, this job. you don't get the freedom at all. Right. And then you never had the finances to, to begin with. Right. And now you have all of these broken relationships yeah. as a result of you neglecting your, your family and other people that might depend on you because you've had this, this, I'm going to call it fake fulfillment, mm -hmm. you know, because again, if, if you're getting fulfillment from somewhere else, but it's, it's damaging the people that you love the most, that's not true fulfillment. Mm. Because it's only a matter of time because that it's gonna be revealed for what it truly is. And what it was is, and I'm, and I'm you know, being transparent, mm. most people use other people to heal their own trauma. Mm. And so it's like, I'm, I'm gonna get fulfillment from you because you're causing me to forget about my responsibilities and the pain that I'm really mm. in. You know, I need I need you to, you know, make me feel better about myself mm. because of what I didn't get or who wow. I'm not or who I don't feel like I am. And so what people do is that they find people that are operating at an extremely low level mm. that even can't even afford their product, even if they were selling it. Mm. And they use them to make themselves feel better. But mm. that's fake fulfillment. Wow. And you're neglecting somebody else that you really love in the process of doing so. Right. Right. And, that, and that's powerful because I never really like looked at it that way, um, because even. Um, and that makes sense, right? Like a lot, a lot of the people who are like, man, I just want to help. And they're like, uh, you know, focusing on a population. They might be formally of that population. Yeah. And because they're, they, they're formally of that population, they have this level of, man, I wish somebody did this for me when yeah. I was coming up yeah. or whatever. And so now they're being altruistic in, in a sense. Um, but that altruism is... Um, is ego based, yeah, right, yeah. And, and and I and, and I and I think people people don't realize that that, that sometimes um, helping people could be based on your ego, yeah, right, where you think you're actually helping them, where you're actually not really helping them, you're feeding your ego, right. So I give you a prime example, um, you know, there was a time, you know, I was you know making a lot of money, um, and I wanted to. Um, you know, help. And so I would always like donate money. Um, and as I'm donating this money, it was, I didn't really care about the outcome of mm. what my money was doing. It was just like, hey, I donate X amount of money every yeah. month. I feel good. Um, and so now that was a stroke of my ego because I wasn't really helping anybody, right? Like if a, if, if a, if a homeless person walks by me and I give them a, a dollar, I give them two dollars, and they go buy some food. They just ate right now. Right. But if I yeah. really wanted to help homeless people, mm -hmm. I would create some type of homeless prevention program or something that could help them 
bet bigger or, or get involved. And sometimes that involvement is not with money. Sometimes it with, is with your time or whatever, right? But now I actually help, right? Um, but I do it in a way that's a little more sustainable, right? Yeah. So, I, so I give you a per- perfect example. Um, I started a nonprofit organization called Abundance Code, uh, creating opportunities despite the environment, teaching financial literacy to uh, formerly incarcerated men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also simultaneously started a water business, so Abundance Water, Abundance H2O. Like <laughs> and every, um, all the proceeds from Abundance Water go to my nonprofit organization. Mm-hmm. So why am I doing that? Because instead of donating money to formerly incarcerated men and women Mm -hmm. right there, you know, just outright, I've created a product that people could buy, right? So now I took that that same donation. Let's say I, you know, let's say, you know, it cost me ten thousand dollars to get my first pallet of water, right? And for that ten thousand, you know, ten thousand dollars, I could, um, you know, now make. A hundred thousand, let's just say, yeah. for that markup, and then now that hundred thousand, you know, I'm now putting it back into the nonprofit, exactly. and then if somebody who's formerly incarcerated need a job, I can give them a job. So that mm-hmm. so that help, if you will, um, is not help that's not gonna uh, that's one and done. It's yeah. like continuous help, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm saying that also to segue into. Um, you know, the, 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 the fact of when you talk about finance, when you talk about freedom, when you talk about fulfillment, um, how does speaking, right? How does speaking kind of coincide with that? How does that, how, how does that fit in, in, in the model that I just said, right? Where, you know, I'm taking, you know, my time, I made the money, I take the money, I buy a product or service that, or that product, that product is now feeding into my nonprofit. How can anyone starting a speaking business could not only fund their finance and freedom, mm-hmm. but allow them to help at whatever level that they want to help? Yeah, well, one thing about speaking is it's kind of like monopoly. Like if you charge too much, they think you plan. Mm. Like you got to charge a certain level to even be taken serious. So that's one advantage is the profit margin is extremely high. Mm. And it's something that when, when you master the, the skill of speaking, and again, it's not speaking like somebody else, but it's really like maximizing your ability to communicate your thoughts and your ideas in a way that your audience can articulate and understand it. They're going to they're gonna compensate you as a result of that. And so it's like, Going back to your motto, it's, you know, when you when you give a little bit of your time and you speak in a way that people financially compensate you, you can take a large portion of that money and you can be your number one donor in your own nonprofit. Mm. Because sometimes the thing that that we we have a passion, you know, to support and do is like instead of begging other people. And I, and I, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, yeah. but but overly asking, if you will, like I think it's good to have outside support. But sometimes we, we tend to, to to beg for the things that, that we need and borrow for the things that we want. But it's like when you see a need, it's like, man, you can use your speaking skills and say, you know what? I'm going to meet the need myself yeah. because sometimes it's like when you when you have something that you're passionate about and, and you finance it yourself and other people see your success, they want to see how can I assist? Like, what can I do to help? Yeah. And so you when because because here's the thing. He who needs he, he who has everything needs nothing mm. like he who, who needs nothing attracts everything. Mm. Like when you don't need anything, yeah. that's when you attract everything. Yeah. You know, you think about people that need to borrow money. Nobody want to lend well, them money. Yeah. But when you got money, every, people want to lend you money. You know, you think about the banking system in our country. Yeah. If you need money, they're not going to loan it to you. Yeah. Or it's going to be a whole lot of trial and red tape. But if you got billions of dollars, man, they trying to throw trying, money right, at you. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And so in terms of speaking, when you utilize this skill to make a large sum of money, whatever passion you have, you can finance it with your own money, yeah. but also you can finance it with your influence because that's another thing. Yeah. The, 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 the number one skill in the world to influence anybody is oration mm. like speaking i yeah. mean you think about the most influential people in the world 
to the violent people, you know, to the, the greatest people. Mm. It was it was all because they had that that skill to persuade and speak, you know, and, it, wow. and, and if you look at them, none of them spoke the exact same, right. but they were all very, very persuasive. Right. And so when you think about that skill, like you can do that on a small level. Nobody even has to know you and you can make multiple six figures and never even be known. Wow. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, like like, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, a book coach. You know, I've helped, you know, thousands of people. Um, create a book um, from whatever product or service that they, they, mm-hmm. they you know, that they provide. Um, and you have a belief system that regardless of what somebody's business is, um, that they should be a speaker, right? Uh, what benefit does speaking um, have for a business owner? Well, one of the things that it does is it gives you the ability to effectively communicate to your customers what you have and how they can benefit from mm, it. Because yeah. sometimes you can be the, the, the number one best kept secret. And I think that's the most painful thing in the world. Because if you have the ability to help people, yeah. but you don't even know how to communicate to them that you actually have the solution, that's painful, especially when you care about people. Yeah. So when it comes to even a business owner, like, the, the ability to communicate just gives you the ability to write whatever check the amount that you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Because it's like this, when you have a business, no matter what the business is, when you think about, okay, we're making this amount of money, whatever amount you want to make that's higher than that, it all comes down to your ability to communicate a higher value on some level. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not so much the product changes, is you're able to communicate a deeper value in the current product you already have at a level where somebody's willing to pay more. Mm. You know, because you think about like people say the riches are in the niches. Yeah. So true. Yeah. You know, and there's there's, you know, productivity courses that's just general. You might sell those for twenty dollars, but you get a, a productivity course specifically for uh, black nur- nurses in Georgia, you mm-hmm. could sell the same exact course mm-hmm. with the same exact content mm-hmm. for a thousand dollars because it's it's you know communicated in a way that's specific to that audience. Yeah. So when you come when you have a business owner, when they're able to specifically communicate to their audience a deeper value, they can make a lot more money and they can help a lot more people because sometimes people can buy a product or service or sign up for a program and they don't take action on it. So it's not that you want to just make money, but you want people to actually do what it is that you actually have an offer because you know it can help them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I love that because I feel like uh, for for a couple couple of things is that, um, you know, when you have, like you said, a a lot of people, best kept secret, they have this information, um, but nobody knows that they, that nobody knows it, right? And so speaking sort of adds that layer of almost like a, like a commercial. It's almost yeah. like, you know, allows you to let people know um, what you can do. And, 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 and the truth of the matter is that the person who can articulate it the best, right? Because when you think about when, when you articulate something and you're, you're, you're talking about your expertise, it allows people to know what you do. And then now, you know, if you can articulate it, then, then people are going to, um, you know, you know, work with you the most. Right. And so, I, so I love that. And then, and then the other piece I like about it is, um, speaking is the, is one of like, just like books are the other thing that allow you to get, you're getting paid to spread your message. Yep. Right. So it's like it's like one thing if 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 I if I got a, you know, they say the average small business spends about eight uh, to ten thousand dollars a month on advertising. Yeah. Right. So you think about that. Right. So you're talking about, you know, anywhere between ninety six thousand yeah. dollars and one hundred and twenty thousand dollars that somebody's paying to advertise their business. Now, now you flip that and you say, you know what, I want to become a speaker. And. I, you know, I, I own a chain of hair salons, you know what I'm saying? And now, uh, I'm a speaker and I speak on, you know, whether it's, you know, how to run a successful uh, franchise mm-hmm. or, you know, how to, you know, get customers, like whatever my expertise is, I can speak on that. And then when I speak on that, people are actually paying me for my yes. expertise. And then when they pay me for my expertise, I'm also promoting what I do. Yep. 
right? I'm promoting my chain. I'm promoting my business. And so as so the higher I become, the more people will be associated with exactly. my Exactly. And I'll say this too. I'm, I could be biased, but I think speaking and book writing is simultaneously, I think everybody should do it. And yeah. the reason why I say that is this. Years, because you talk about passion earlier, years and years ago, I used to work in the school system and I was very passionate about like helping young men because it's like nobody had to answer. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book. I wrote one book. I did presentations for years off of that one book. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the, the level of communication, I communicated my ideas in a book, but then I took the, the same content information from that book and created a six-figure career from one presentation that I did over and over and over again. And here's the, here's the, the crazy thing, and I've, I've, never said any, I've never told anybody this publicly, but so much of the information that I got from my book and my presentation came from somebody that I studied doing Mary Kay. Wow. So they were talking about like psychology and behavior and how to understand behavior and how to change behavior and things like that with people that don't want to change. Mm. And so I took that information and I transferred it to the school system because sometimes people don't understand that when you want to do something like just change world changing in a certain like group or environment, you got to go to another environment to see what's working to introduce something new. Because if you do what's already been done, that you're going to get all what you already got. So, so I actually took content from, from a Mary Kay consultant on psychology and behavior, brought it to the school system, wrote a book from it and made six figures from a presentation that I did over and over and over again. Wow. And so again, like people don't understand, like sometimes you can, you can just like create something one time yeah. and you might be horrible at it the first time yeah. and that's okay, but you keep iterating yourself to greatness and eventually you're going to get so good that people are going to want to pay you for it. Here's yeah. the other thing, depending on your topic, people just want the information. Yeah. You don't even have to be a great speaker. Yeah. If you got it's like funny because because that, that was going to be my, my 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 question about being a great speaker. Cause we got yeah yeah because again if somebody's dying of cancer yeah and it's like you know you you got a solution man they don't care how raspy your voice fact, is how low your tone what you man they just want the info like tell me the solution yeah. and so like sometimes and that's why it's also important to pick like a topic that people are already willing to pay for because they're not looking at you they're looking at how you can help them they yeah. don't care any anything about you yeah. period yeah yeah and I, and I think that's that's an important thing that people need to realize like even as people are watching and I was that was why I was gonna ask that question uh, can anyone become a speaker because um, I've seen people who um, have a great message but because they're in their heads they don't put that message out and they feel like you know they have to talk a certain way or look a certain way uh, where the you know the truth of the matter is that they just need to be themselves. Yep. They you know like if you if you got a, a face full of tattoos, there are people out there who want to hear you speak. Yep. If you're a great business person, or if you can help them with whatever you know you say you can help them with, um, it's really not the appearance is what you is what you is what you are offering in yep. your speeches, you know, at the yep. end of the day. Because sometimes too, and I'll say this, Ash, the, the, the inner image is more important than the outer image. Mm. Because like what you see inside of you is what you're going to communicate and reflect outside of you. Because just being honest, like there are some people, in my opinion, that are extremely, extremely not attractive at all mm. on the outside. Yeah. But man, they got so much confidence and it's like nobody ever told them that they was ugly or yeah. whatever. And it's like, man, all of this confidence. And, and sometimes it's like people find themselves attracted to somebody like, man, I'm not supposed to be attracted to somebody right. who look like this. Right. But because of how that person feels about the themselves inside, on the inside, the energy, it's yeah. like the energy is just drawn. And it's yeah. like we don't even realize like we're, we're drawn to somebody's energy. And, yeah. and I know energy, you know, you say that word and people are like, oh, whatever. But it's real. Because, no, again, I live in Texas, you know. Yeah. I ride with the, you know, the windows up, you yeah. know, the air condition on. And it's like sometimes you can feel people looking at you mm. and you look over. That's a fact, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, OK, they just happened to look in the same exact right. direction that you was looking at. Like, right. that's energy. Right. Like, you, you, you didn't say anything to them. They didn't say anything to you. But they just happened to all, the, all of these people right. to look in the exact direction. And it's like, that's energy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and it's like, that's the other thing about speaking. It's like. When, when, when people speak, like sometimes they don't realize that they're not transferring information. Mm. They're transferring energy. Mm. 
And people buy that more than they buy information mm. because if you totally are sold out in what you're selling and you believe what you're selling, like that's what you convince people on. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I heard this years ago, it's better to be a fool on fire than an expert on ice. Oh, it's a bar. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, man, this dude, he just really yeah. believe he is. He has a conviction. Yeah. And like, that's what people buy. That's what people are persuaded yeah. by. And it's like, it, it looks different for, for, for everybody. Yeah. No, it's funny you say that because I, because, you know, there's people that I've seen who have a large following who do what well, they really not saying nothing. <laughs> it's really how you, how they make yeah. people feel. Exactly. Right? Like they, like, like they have this way of making people feel good or making people feel hopeful or making, right? And so they, I'm telling you, they could be like talking and I'll be listening. I'll be like, yo, fam did not just say nothing. <laughs> like he just put a whole bunch of words together, but charismatic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Great, like great energy. And you're like, ah, oh, people are buying that. Yeah. They're buying the, the energy. They're buying the charisma. They're buying... Um, how that person makes them feel, and then ultimately, that's all that really matters, it though, is. right? Because if I'm teach, if I'm trying to teach somebody something, and they're not optimistic about what I'm trying to teach them. Yeah. If I can make them optimistic about what I'm trying to teach them, that's actually going to make them want to want to know more, right. and either they're going to research the more themselves, or they're going to come to me for the more because I've given, you know, I gave them that information. Yeah. 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 So talk to me a little bit about how, how do you uh, currently help coaches, consultants, and business owners um, grow their revenue with speaking? So, so one thing that I do now is that I've transferred most of my speaking to online because again, I'm all about time yeah. and I love to spend time with my family and, you know, younger, it's like traveling out like that sounds great, but man, when you living out of a hotel, and you by yourself, you know, oh, that, you know, all of that celebrity, it, 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 you know, so I, I focus really on helping them to make money from the online space. And, I, and again, just like myself, where I had one book, one presentation making six figures. And so I focus on helping them to make one presentation and focus on one specific target audience. And they make six figures from it, yeah. working less than 20 hours a week, because to me, it's like the freedom, finances, and fulfillment, like that's important to me. And that's the one thing that I want for everybody else because I understand how I'm benefiting from it. And so like I, I help them by helping them to, you know, craft their message, you know, uh, because one of the most painful things is people trying to nail down their niche. You know, it's like, man, it's nothing more frustrating when you got so much inside of you, but you don't know where to direct it to or who, who to really help with it. And so I help them figure all of that out, you know, but also how to be more impactful. And again, making those six figures working less than, you know, 20 hours a week, you know, and that's all done by way of wealth versity. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I love that because I think that, you know, again, you know, it's, Everybody like 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 we're all set. We're all selling something, right? Exactly. When you when you go on a job interview, you're trying to sell yourself. When you have a customer that comes in, you're trying to sell. Um, and if you don't know how to speak, yeah. If you don't have the the right energy, if you don't know how to put it put together that one presentation, and that's what that, 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 that's the funny thing about it is that people think it's so difficult. Yeah. Right. Where speaking is probably the most the easiest thing that you can do. Because you really just need one message, one book, one presentation, and be able to relay that one presentation over and over and over again, right? Yeah. And so people make it difficult. They think, oh my God, I, you know, I need to go to college, yeah. or I got to have a <laughs> master's, or I got to be a, a speech writer or a curriculum writer. Yeah. Like, like they really feel like they have to... Um, you know, you know, know these advanced things where the truth of the matter is that, you know, you again, you just need to be guided, though. Right. Yep. You need to be guided yep. in the right direction. But that guidance is going to give you that 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 perfect uh, presentation that you could you could perfect over time. Exactly. Right? You could go. You could, you could keep doing it over and over again. And then once you figure that piece out. That is sort of like off to the races. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of them thinking that it's so difficult, it's it's actually not their fault. And I think because you know we've been hearing about speaking is the number one fear in the world, like that just feeds into the the, the difficulty of it. Yeah. And and so often people have so like these different communication courses and speaking and things like that 
for higher prices and the more difficult that they make it sound, mm. then the more difficult people think it is and the more money that they'll pay. Right. But it's like sometimes if you really want to help people, you keep it simple. But if the more you want to impress people, you complicate it. Right. And it's like for me, I'm all about keeping it simple. And right. it's like, you know, to, to be able to create one presentation. Yeah. That's, you know, two hours long. And you communicate that one time a month. Yeah. And you make six figures a year and, and all the rest of your time you get to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. It's like, man, that's that's the and you impacting people's lives at the same time. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And no, I love that. And so and so so wealth versity, um, you know, what what is what is wealth versity and, um, you know, what, what was your your inspiration to start it? So, so what Wealthversity is, it's, um, it's, it's a platform that helps speakers and coaches, again, narrow their niche, you know, increase their impact, and make specifically six figures working less than 20 hours a week. And again, I'm saying six figures, but if people want to make more than that, they can. Yeah. Just increase the time or you know, increase the value that they communicate. But I'm saying that there's really no limitation on it. And the, the motivation for me was my own pain. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I really believe that the, the thing that brings you pain is the very thing that you become passionate about. Mm. And it's like, you know, I remember uh, not knowing how to read when I was in third grade, had all of these different limitations, you know, and negative beliefs and all those kind of things. And sometimes we don't realize the very thing that we want to hide is the very thing that we can use to connect with somebody else to get them from where they are to where they want to be. Mm. And so for me, like going through my different experiences and, and then, you know, having a transformation where I figured it out, you know, a lot of money, time, mentors, all those kind of things and, and understanding like the importance of the family. Like yeah. I think I think the family right now is like it's, be, it's just being torn apart. 100%. And, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, it, and if it's not for the sake of all of the parents at work or one parent at work and not spending time with the kids, whatever the case may be, like. I feel like wealthversity can be the thing that really helps parents get their time back, yeah. increase their income, and buy better memories with their family. Yeah, yeah. And I love that because I think that, I mean, you know, I'm a family man, you're a family man. I think that people don't realize the power of family, though, right? The power yeah. uh, that family has on your finances, yes. on your freedom, and your fulfillment. Fulfillment, definitely. Right? Like, it, yeah. ha it has so much power. Um, and, and to that point, I think that because there's so many um, relationship gurus or people who, um, you know, have been in, in, in relationships that don't work, mm -hmm. they are now giving advice about <laughs> something that they really don't know. Yeah. What, right. It's like it's like it's like you never learn how to drive. Right. You never learn how to drive. But you are trying to go down, you're trying to get from place point A to point B. And so because you're watching, you you see all these different people who who drive. Like some people drive with no hands. People drive, right? So you say, Oh, I could do that. I could drive. I didn't learn about driving, but I'm gonna yeah. drive. I get in the car, you get in the car, you start the car, and you try to drive and you crash the car. Yep. And now because you crash the car, you're on a rampage telling everybody that, that could hear exactly. that cars don't work. Yep. Oh, cars don't work. Why you got why you getting a car? You wasting your time. Right? Stop getting stop driving. Anybody who's driving, you you no. It's not that cars don't work. You didn't learn how to use it. Exactly. Right? You didn't learn how to use it. And so, you know, and, and I and I'm I'm really passionate about that because I feel mm -hmm. like uh family is the gateway to wealth. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, family is the gateway to our community. Family is the gateway to, you know, us being able to be, do, and have everything that we desire. Exactly. And so, you know, again, you know, learning how to do it, right? And so, segue into that, right? Like, I, like, like, there might be somebody watching who's who tried to become a speaker, right? They tried to become a speaker. Um, they're exhausted. They're like, man, like. I ain't never doing this no more. I put all this money in. I wrote all these speeches. I did all this stuff. Nope. There's no money in speaking. You can't make money in speaking, right? They, they're the person that got in the car and crashed it, right? What advice are you giving to beginner, like anybody who is beginning to speak, uh, or even a business owner who um, has heard you now and is like, you know what? I do want to 
learn, you know, how to, you know, how to speak, but I don't think I could do it. What advice are you giving to them and what's the first step that they should take? So the, so the one thing that I would say in terms of the beginner yeah. who, who tried it and, and it quote unquote didn't work. I don't care who you are and how good or bad you feel like you are or are not. There is somebody in the same specific industry that you're in that you know for a fact you feel like you're a better speaker than they are, but mm. they're making money and you're not. Yeah. So th number one, that's evidence that is proof that it does work. Mm. So, you know, you, you, you convince yourself of that because you see the possibility in somebody else. Because sometimes people know that something is possible. They don't think that it's possible for them. Mm. And the thing that I would just say is when you look at the person that you know you're a better speaker than, think about all of the people on the other side of your message that's going to suffer as a result of you not keep going and you're not figuring it out because you feel like the easier thing to do is just to give up. Mm. And I would say also with that person, think about what I said in terms of health, wealth and relationships. If you haven't made money in it, figure out how can you tie it to one of those three? Mm. Because somebody will pay you for your message if you tie it to one of those three because they're already paying other people yeah. to do it. Yeah. And I'll say in terms of the, 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 the business owner, when, when you understand how to take one message and you could take that one message and use that same message to multiply your business all over again like that's the way number one to cut down on overhead mm. cut down on time you know maximize impact and actually have a greater cult like following if you want in a positive way as it relates to customers and it will cut down on your marketing yeah. why because word of mouth marketing is the number one marketing in the world yeah. what are they doing they're talking they're effectively communicating mm. to somebody and see the thing is this people are not fearful of speaking they're fearful of not knowing what to say when they do speak. Mm. When somebody is passionate about, you know, this product or this service, nobody had to tell them what to say or give them any kind of script. Yeah. Like they're just, again, a fool on fire is better than an expert on ice. People yeah. just see their excitement like, man, I want, I want what you got. Yeah. And so as a business owner, when you actually become a more effective speaker, and again, you just mastering that one message, now you cut down on marketing and you cut like like you just multiply your impact because now you have word of mouth marketing that will never stop even if your business does man and and, that, and that's powerful and so and so I, I love the fact that um you know again it you know word of mouth and you know being able to articulate um you know you're a great speaker you've made a lot of money through speaking um you know somebody might might look at you though and say well you know this brother you know, was always smart. He, you know, went to all the great schools, uh, graduated, you know, you know, magna cum laude. Uh, I don't even know what that is, but I always hear it all the time, right? <laughs> graduated magna cum laude. And so, you know, somebody's watching you um, may not be able to relate to you because you, because you were always smart, because you, uh, you know, graduate top of your class since you was in kindergarten, right? <laughs> um, what do you say to that person? What I would say to that person is this, um, man, I failed a third grade almost twice. Hmm. You know, I was third born grade. the third grade wow. almost twice. Wow. Uh, my mother and father was 14 and 15 when I was conceived, uh, labeled dyslexic. And believe it or not, man, I was expected to be a failure when I was when I was younger. Yeah. And so, you know, it's people say it's not about how you start, but it's how you finish. Mm. But I will say how you start makes your finish a little bit easier. Mm. But whatever you want your finish to be is not impossible, you know, because sometimes and I'm glad you asked the question, because sometimes people can see the person up front, but they don't realize that it took so many iterations for this person to get to where they are. And it's still a whole lot more work to do. And so I would say to that person, like if 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 your life is hard and you got so many different struggles, that's an advantage, mm. you know, because you and I both understand that that people who grew up a certain way, you grew up in the hood. Yeah. You have an advantage that people didn't grow up in the hood have exactly. because it's like you have a degree from the school of hard knocks that they can never get no matter how much money they got, no matter what accredited school that they go to. Yeah. So you actually have an advantage, yeah. you know, because you think about even people in the corporate world, like everybody loves a violent movie, a jail story and all this. Kind of, but nobody want to live it. Facts. They like the movie, but they don't want to live Facts. it. But the fact that you lived it, it's like that gives you a credibility that a lot of people don't have because the deeper your story is, the more people you're going to connect with, even if they've never been through that experience. Because the thing that we can all connect around is hopelessness. Mm. And so the more of that you've had, the more of a benefit you actually have to reach more people. Yeah. yeah and I love that. And, it's, and it's, so what do you say to the person, right, who, you know, a lot of our insiders 
um, are are Henrys, right? High earners, uh, not rich yet. So they make a lot of money. Um, that you know they might they make it six figures, high six figures, like they got it. Um, but you know that they they're exchanging time for money, even at that high level, um, and they're looking for a way to you know increase their finances a little more independently, create that freedom, uh, and then and then and then also have that level of fulfillment. Um, how does one transition, right? So like. Yeah, I'm working full time. So, I, like, 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 I work full time. Probably working sixty hours. Like, I don't know if I got more time to to give to something to learn something. Um, and I can't afford to just quit my job right mm -hmm. now because I have this six figure lifestyle. Um, but I, but I, but I, but I hear what you're saying, Chris. I hear you. Uh, I know that I could speak. In fact, you know, at my job. You know, I, I do I do daily huddles all the time. I'm always, you know, getting my team together, and I so I know I can speak. You know, during 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 t during uh, company meetings, I'm always up front, so I I know I could do it. But but how do I make this into a business, especially if I'm if I'm working a nine to five? So the one thing that I would do, the first thing that I would say, and somebody that we both know, they say that your job is your first business partner. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. If you've gotten to a certain level in your job and you are Henry, leverage that title. Mm. Because sometimes the title there will allow you to have credibility in another area, and you can actually use that to, to launch your speaking career in a way that maybe you couldn't have had you not had that. So I would say leverage the title that they currently have you that, like that person, they can do speaking on the side, you know, or they can create some kind of program or product. So, for instance, if somebody's a Henry and they want to get out of this position, they can create a program specifically for other Henry's. Mm. And you think about this, Ooh. if you're already dealing with people that are high earners, yep. you know, but they just not at that level that, that they want to be at, they, they have money and you don't need a whole lot of Henry's to make a whole lot of money. But it's like when you can help them on a deep level, like, you know, get to where you are because again sometimes it, it's like people think that an expert you got to be 10 steps ahead of somebody yeah sometimes you only have to be one step ahead mm. of the person who you're helping yeah. and it's like they'll pay you whatever because we all want a guide right and so i would say to that person like wherever you are you can create some kind of program to help get people to where you are to the point where they're they're at least they, like they at least have enough faith that if the uh, opportunity come, I will take it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like some people, like they're at a point where they don't even have the mindset yet to to leave because they're like, I couldn't even imagine not having this job because of the insurance. So right. so they're stuck some kind of way. So if you can just help somebody get unstuck just in that area alone, yeah. you can make a lot of money from yeah. it. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I love that, and I think I think it's you know I, you know I, I, so a couple of things that that just just unpack, and I love. Uh, the fact that a lot of people have to realize that they're already doing the thing. Yep. Right. They're, they're, they are or like like so you could be your own avatar. Exactly. Like you are already the one. Exactly. Right. Yep. That can help somebody else because you're one step ahead. Right. Yep. Um, and then even from this, you know, and I don't know who, who where the statistic came, but even this, that statistic, I know you mentioned earlier that like people say, oh, oh you know, you know, people fear public speaking more than death. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. How can you fear public <laughs> speaking more than death? Right? Because it's crazy. At, the end, at the end of the day, again, a lot of people are already doing it. Yep. Right? They're they're already, you know, sort of uh speaking every day. Um and, and the truth of the matter, I mean, as somebody who like I've spoken in front of a crowd of over ten thousand, twelve thousand people. The truth of the matter is that you can't see all of them. You can't yeah, see yeah, all yeah, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And so, <laughs> and so, really, uh, this is like a like like I mean, a trick or whatever. Like, a lot of people think of, when they think about speaking, they think about, oh my God, what if I make a mistake or whatever. The truth is, nobody knows you make a mistake unless no. you tell them. No. Right. No. The truth of the matter is that like nobody is judging you because they're they're actually applauding you and they've they've already given you that authority because that, you're yep. on that stage yep and i think the other thing with speaking too is that no matter who you are there's going to be that one person that no matter what you say 
they're going to they're going to love what you say. They're going to applaud what you say. They're going to find a positive in what you say. And it's like when you have a fear of public speaking, the thing that I would say is just speak to that one person. Yeah. Speak to the one person no matter what you do is right. Even yeah. if you think it's wrong, it's, it's right. Yeah. Because if you speak to that person, you don't realize there's going to be so many of that same person in the audience. Yeah. And they're going to feel like, you know what? He was talking or she was talking just to me. Yeah. And it's like when you can speak, speak to somebody like from a soul perspective, like a spiritual perspective. And it's like, man, it was like, that's when you impact people on a much deeper level and you make it about them and not you. Because I think sometimes the, the best speakers in the world, they get lost in their presentation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like actors, phenomenal speakers, yeah. they get lost in the character. Yeah. And it's like when you get on a virtual stage or a physical stage, whatever, and you get lost in your character and, and not lost from the perspective of your identity, but lost from the perspective that, you know what, it's not about me, but it's about who I'm serving. Yeah. You're gonna serve at a higher level because you put service above self. Yeah. Is is there is there a is there like a difference between um, speaking in you know, in front of a real audience, not a real audience, but in, in front of a live audience and speaking online? Um, like what like what what would you say? And and not not a difference from um, energy perspective right because i you know i mean i mean i mean you 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 may agree you may not agree but i feel like when you're when you're live in front of people definitely you know there's a like you can feel the energy in the you room right opposed can. to yep. being online but what is the like is there like an advantage is there like uh you know like 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 what like what's the difference from a business perspective between doing something live and then finding that on like doing it online I, I mean i think there's pros and cons to both i do think and i agree with you 100 percent. the energy is totally different when you're live you know versus when you're online because when you're online it's almost like you have to artificially create the yeah. energy for yourself yeah. because you might be the only person in your own room where right. you're speaking so you got to kind of create it you know the, the 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 benefit to that though is that you can reach a lot more people mm -hmm. online than you can face to face and then depending on what you're what you're selling or you know what you're presenting to somebody people might be a lot more comfortable in their space at yeah. home mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. than if they're face to face, That's you true. know? And, and, and a lot of times like, like people think that other people are judging them, mm -hmm. but it's like really everybody's thinking about themselves and yeah. other people judging them. So everybody really thinking about themselves. Yeah. And so when you're online, you kind of take away that level of, you know, internal judgment that people have, you know, if, if I buy this, are somebody looking at me? Or if I don't buy it, is somebody looking right. at me? Or if I raise my hand and agree with this, is somebody judging me? You know, so, so you have certain advantages and disadvantages when it comes to speaking online. But I think that regardless if it's online or offline, when you effectively communicate whatever it is that you're passionate about and what you're selling, you're serving somebody, you know, either way. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. And so accelerating your cash flow, right? Um, you you are a proponent. You're like, look, speaking can accelerate your cash flow. Man, without explain, a doubt. explain that for me. So so the the way that speaking can accelerate your cash flow is because, you know, instead of you um, making money, and again, no disrespect to anybody, because again, you gotta you gotta work from where you are, you know. But in terms of like making a, a hourly wage that somebody pays you, when you speak, you make an hourly wage that you envisioned mm. Be because like you, you can, you can, you can make as much money as you want to make when it comes to speaking. And I know that that sounds so crazy to some people because they're like, how, because they've never done it before, yeah. you know, but it's like to, to, to have a room full of people and I'm gonna go back to cancer patients. Mm -hmm. You know, my, one of my aunts who I love dearly, man, she died from cancer. Mm -hmm. But if you got a room full of people, that that have cancer and you're in front of them and you're selling a product that can at least prolong their life for six months yeah how much do you think each of those people would be willing to pay you mm. for six more months of life Facts. even if you charge ten thousand dollars that's a steal yeah you charge ten thousand dollars you got a hundred people you had a million yeah that's for an hour of your time so so when it comes to speaking like that can accelerate your cash flow quicker than anything else because all you have to do is just find you know a, a hurting audience or a starving audience and you put in front of them what they're starving or hurting for yeah. and the money is there yeah and, and, and you know one, one, one thing I, I, I want to say though too is that you know I mean all over the news they're talking about student loan debt and things of that nature 
Um, and I know there's a, you know, lawyers out there, doctors out there who, you know, are, are happy. They're getting their three hundred dollars an hour, um, but they still got these, um, you know, these these large student loan debts. Um, when you become a speaker, you make more than a doctor. Man, you make like and, 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 and a lawyer and a lawyer. It just popped in my head just now because I was thinking, I'm like, man, like I remember there was this company that hired me, large media company hired me to do a. 30, is it 30 or 45 minutes? It was like 30 or 45 minute training for their employees and they paid me $10,000. I said, yo, I just got paid. Yeah. They say it was a half an hour. <laughs> I just got paid. Like my hourly rate is $20,000 in that particular case. Mm -hmm. I said, somebody just paid me $20,000 or $10,000, but you know, if I double yeah. it because of the hour, I said, I paid $10,000. To, to literally just train and speak to a group of people via Zoom. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? It wasn't even in person. Yeah. It was a, it was a Zoom training. Yep. And I, and, I, and, I, and I got a degree from a community college. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talk to us about your, uh, your five-day challenge coming up. So one of the things that I want to do is, is really break down um, like how, how to help people become the person who's able to charge, you know, whatever they want to charge for their program, you know, then help people to truly understand like how to craft their message, but also how to find the people that, that you know, pretty much pay them the money for them. So if they got a program, figure out, you know, how to how to fill your events, you know, live events and things like mm -hmm. that, um, but also how to cause your cash flow to be consistent because it's one thing to make money but it's another thing to keep that money flowing on a consistent basis mm -hmm. and so within the five days we're going to take people through you know how to number one you know find their voice because again sometimes people don't know what that is yeah. um you know but also how to how to craft that one message and then how to find people to pay you for whatever you're selling whether it's your your service you know or your fee with that you know whatever it is either way yeah and and i mean insiders know by now but like i love uh the five-day challenge model i do five-day challenges uh practically on a monthly basis um i think it's the it's, it's one of the best ways uh, to learn yep. um, a lot of information, uh, but in a digestible way, exactly right. But then also, it's the best way to uh, really uh, create a result for yourself exactly. in one week, right? Yep. So, so if you're looking to quantum leap, right? So, if somebody's watching right now, um, you know, you, you you thought about being a speaker, uh, or you never thought about being a speaker, but you're like, you know what, this guy Chris, you know, he's saying something. You know, I, I'm a business owner. You know, I'm spending so much money on advertising. I don't want to spend all that money on advertising. Right. And I want to, you know, be able to, to you know, make money and advertise, right? Abundance is your birthright. That's right. And it's better than or, right? That's so right. I want to make money and I want to be able to advertise. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're like, all right, I, I, I like what this is, where this is going. Um, you know, definitely join the, the, the five-day challenge because it, it really gives you an opportunity to quantum leap, right? If you do it by yourself, you might, you know, you could, you, you could go YouTube University <laughs> if you want to, but it's not going to give you that result that you're looking for because, you know, as somebody who has been in the game for a while, I mean, talk, 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 like, like, how did you get your start? Like, what, what was the... You know, what was the transition from you, right? You, you talked about being in education. How, how did you transition from education, you know, to speaking? And then now, you know, you're, you know, you're this international speaker, author, you know, world-renowned coach. Like, how did you get there? So great question. So one of the first presentations that I ever had was uh, I was in high school. Mm. And um, the, the D.A.R.E. program, you know, keeping kids off drugs and things like that. Yeah. So the D.A.R.E. program had me as like a celebrity, you know, high school football player to go around and talk to all of the elementary school kids about the D.A.R.E. program. Yeah. So that was kind of how I started. And then um, I became a teacher. And uh, long story short, I ended up moving from, from Detroit, Michigan to Columbus, Ohio. And so I was traveling around Columbus, Ohio, you know, talking to kids about the importance of saving sex into marriage. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was broke. I wasn't making no money. Wow, wow. <laughs> and then I met a mentor there, and he showed me how to make in one day what I was making in a month. Wow. And it's like from there, 
the, the, the game changed for me. And so that's when I, you know, incorporated, I started, you know, I wrote a book and I started going back to the same school systems that I was working for in the other school systems. And I was charging them, you know, $5,000 to train their staff, what I used to be. And I made money from that, from that one book. And that's kind of how I got started. And it's like, from there, my message matured. And so the youth, you know, that I was helping and the parents, it's like, it went from, okay, what are the problems do they have that I can help them solve? Because my message is evolving. And that's kind of how I got to where I am now. Wow. Wow. I love that. All right, y'all. So got to tap in five day challenge. Uh, and, and, and don't miss what he said, right? He said he had a mentor, right? And that mentor is the one that helped him get to a result the fastest way. Exactly. If you look in the dictionary, mentor comes before money. That's right. Mentor comes before success, right? And so you need that mentor. You need somebody who's been there, somebody who could guide you. Um, if somebody's trying to tap in and, and get, to, get to that five-day challenge, uh, where can they find it? So I would tell them, you know, and specifically for your inside the vault, I would tell them to go to mywealthversity.com mywealthversity.com and I have something special specifically for the inside the vault listeners communities and the family let's go y'all so listen I need I'm gonna I'm put the link in the description below but I need you to go to mywealthversity.com tap into the five-day challenge spend time with Chris be able to learn right accelerate your cash flow right. learn everything that you need to learn so that way you can get what you can get your finances you can get your freedom and you can also get that fulfillment That's right those three f's will stop you from saying that other f that you know what i'm saying that you're not supposed <laughs> to be saying but uh if you want to uh want, want to want to find you uh you know besides going to mywealthversity.com uh where can they find you uh, YouTube, you know, just, you know, Chris Cannon, you know, or uh, Facebook, Chris Cannon as well. All right. So yeah. we're going to put everything in the link below. We are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Uh, you know, subscribe to us. Go to InsideTheVaultTV.com. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, I am Ash Cash .com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. And remember to join us at the Abundance Community. Go to abundancecommunity.org. You know, we got some exclusive behind the scenes information with Chris. He's going to drop gems that he didn't even drop on this episode behind the scenes. So make sure you join the Abundance Community, abundancecommunity.org. And as always, I appreciate you. I thank you so much for being here with us. And we'll see you next time in God's will. All right, y'all. Peace.